Hi everybody, and welcome to the Digital VLSI Design course at Bar Ilan University. I'm Dr. Adam Tiemann, and today we will be going on to Lecture 5, Timing Analysis. So Lecture 5 is the last part of our lecture discussing synthesis. During the synthesis flow, we briefly went over the fact that we have something called design constraints, where we constrain our design for a uh, op timing optimization goal. Now we'll go deeper into that, also discuss timing reports, and finally go into multi-mode, multi-corner design, which will kind of help us go from the synthesis optimization world into the real world, um, where we actually will go into physical implementation and continue with lecture six in that, in that field. But as a start, we'll remember what sequential clocking is. So synchronous design. Um, almost every single digital design that you'll run into is synchronous. Um, which means it's constructed with sequential elements. As we see here, we have the combinational logic that is all kinds of AND gates and OR gates and so forth, and it's just a function of the current inputs, a function uh, that Y is a function of uh, A, B, C, D, etc. Um, but what we want to do is we want to put in some registers, some sequential elements here, and they actually cover the current state of the design. So uh, when we drive the current state back into the input, it actually becomes a function of the present state of the design as well. And that allows us to do two important things. First of all, it eliminates races. And second of all, it enables us to do pipelining to increase throughput. Um, I'm not going to go deeply into the reasoning behind this. It's one of the basic uh, um, basic ideas that we have in digital systems. So um, just for this course, what we're going to do is we're going to assume that all our sequentials, all our registers are D flip flops that are edge triggered. Um, in this case, they're going to also be positive edge triggered. We're going to mark that by having a little um, triangle on our on our flip-flops here the input is called D the output is called Q and that will kind of be what we'll be using uh, throughout the course okay there are three critical prime uh, timing parameters when we discuss um, D flip-flops the first one is the propagation delay of the flip-flop and it's it would look like we would be going from the D to the Q uh, output but it's not the fact because the data arrives at the input here and waits for a while until the edge of the clock so once the clock edges, then the data propagates to the output. So it's from the C, the clock pin, to the Q pin. Uh, so from C to Q, and that's called TCQ, and that's our basic propagation delay of our flip-flop. Um, the second timing parameter is what we call setup time. Setup time is the time that the data has to arrive here at the point at the entrance to the flip-flop here before the clock actually rises um, to ensure that it's actually captured in a correct fashion. And the fourth parameter is called T-hold. Uh, the third parameter, excuse me, is called T-hold, which is the amount of time that we have to keep our data stable here at the input to the uh, flip-flop before we have a timing, e the next timing edge. Um, I'll discuss that in more detail in the following slides. So let's start with TCQ, which, as I said, is the type of propagation delay. It's the equivalent of TPD in a, um, in a standard com uh, combinatorial um, gate. Um, so TCQ is, the, the TCQ is the time from the clock edge until we get to the output. So it's from clock to Q. There is no path from D to Q because um, this is always going to be opaque. It's only a singular point when we have this rising edge on the clock does the data transfer from D to Q. So the delay is triggered by the, um, the, the rising edge at Q and it's, sample, uh, and it's sampled either by a rising or falling edge on the Q output. So it's TC to Q, okay? We can see it here in the waveforms below. So we have some input signal D that we are going to be changing at different points of time. And here we have our clock edge that's periodically going to be rising. We mark with a little arrow the relevant edge, and since we're using positive edge triggered uh, timing, our flip flops are positive edge triggered. We only care about the rising edge of the clock, and only it has a little uh, arrow on it. So what we do is we take the time uh, uh, that the clock rises. We look at the fifty percent or whatever our lib is defined for, but we usually look at fifty percent uh, change in the rising edge of the clock, and we look for when the output. Right, uh, changes to 50%. Um, here, the output is rising, 
uh, it's going from a low state to a high state. So we call this TCQ low to high. Um, if we look further along, then we see that in this case, our, uh, our data went and fell from one to zero. And so when we do this sampling and the clock again passes 50%, what we see is a falling edge on the output. So this is a high to low transition or TCQHL, and uh, we have another TCQLH over here. So TCQLH and TCQHL are different. Um, they have to be characterized differently, measured differently, and they are both covered in our lib files that we already looked at before. Uh, throughout much of the course, we will only um, say TCQ, not uh, differentiating between LH and HL just for simplicity, but of course you always have to look at both of them at the, the, the difference between them. Our next timing parameter is the setup time. So T setup or setup time, sometimes it's called TSU, is another type of thing that it will often appear as, is the time the data has to arrive before the clock to ensure correct sampling. So we um, can look at different circuit designs of flip-flops and understand why there is this constraint. But in general, we have some sort of a window that is around our uh, clock edge. So if this is a rising clock edge, we call the time before the, um, the clock edge that our data has to be stable as T setup, and the time that it has to be stable after the rising clock edge as T hold. So now we're talking about T setup, and it's defined in a positive manner in the, the, the left uh, looking direction. So the amount of time before the clock edge that the data has to be stable is the T setup. Um, what that means is that if our data arrived later than that, somewhere within this window here, then um, it will, we cannot ensure that the output will be correct. So let's look at our um, little diagram here and our clock again periodically uh, changes with our little arrow on the rising clock edge. And here we have our input that, that changed at the entrance of the clock because of different data paths. So in this case, D uh, changed from zero to one during this clock period. This is the last transition before the clock edge. And what we do is we look at the clock edge over here. Uh, um, we focus on this. We look set up time before the clock edge that comes to this point, And we see that the last change of D was more than set up time before the clock edge. And that means everything is good. Again, we can go in here we have, and that's uh, actually the setup time for a rising change in D. Here, D falls and we have a uh, falling change in D. And again, in the lib files, these are differentiated between setup time for a rising edge and setup time for a falling edge, though we will usually just discuss them as one for simplicity. So we have to, again, focus around our clock edge, look at how long the setup time is. And as long as the last change was uh, at least setup time before the clock edge, everything is good. And we copy this change out to the output in a manner of TCQ amount of time. This is TCQ, that's the propagation delay. The setup time is just a constraint that ensures correct functionality. Of course, our third little example will show that we have a, uh, a, setup, uh, a setup time violation. So here we have a, a change a short time before the rising clock edge. If we focus on um, this area, we put our setup time over here, we see that the clock changed um, too late in the clock cycle. Too, uh, too short a time before our clock edge, and that means we have some sort of violation. We cannot ensure that our data passed correctly, and that is considered a timing violation, which we're not allowed to ever do. In a similar fashion, we have T hold, and uh, remember, as we said before, we have our rising clock edge over here, and there's some sort of window around that edge that uh, the time before the clock edge that has to be stable is T setup, and the time after the, the, the data has to be stable is T hold. So T hold is defined in the right pointing direction. That means that we're, when we discuss a positive T hold, it's the amount of time after the clock edge that the data cannot change. Okay, so again, we um, take our clock here, and it's the same type of a clock, and we have some sort of changes in D. And we look here and we see that D rows over here it has to be at least set up time before our clock edge and it has to be stable for at least hold time after our clock edge. So we focus on the area following our clock edge and we put in our T hold constraint and we see that the change was after 
t hold. So um, it was stable for at least this amount of time, and therefore our TCQ will work correctly. Again, this is TCQ, the propagation from the clock edge to the Q output, but since the data changed at least t hold after that, then everything is fine. Um, if we look at the next clock cycle, again, we look around the clock cycle and we see that the next change is much farther away uh, than we expect, than, than needed, and so we probably had a good transition. It was longer than T hold, and we can see that this is the second TCQ, and it was for a falling edge on the output. Okay, the, the third case, of course, will be disrupted. And here we have our clock edge, and soon after we have our um, change in our data. And it, this was before the T hold constraint passed, and therefore we get some sort of an error on our output.